For as much time as I've spent talking about Cartoon Network Lost Media on this channel, I've actually never made a dedicated video discussing several different topics all at once. Sure, I have lots of old videos that covered single topics, and that one I compiled recently of the most classic searches, but as for new content, I've yet to make a dedicated video about it, and that's going to change today. I think when it comes to animation or content from the big TV networks, Cartoon Network is my favorite. I grew up watching the channel more than anything else, and while I tapped out of Nickelodeon in the late 2000s and early 2010s, I was still watching CN long after that. And of course, when it comes to lost media, I simply find so many of the topics that come from the channel fascinating for their obscurity and originality. On top of the fact that it feels like I get to relive my childhood and discover new pieces of it that I wasn't aware of before. Today's video is going to cover several topics that I'm sure you've either never heard about before, or simply haven't been discussed online for years, which is always surprising when you think about how popular the channel was, but it also goes to show how deep Cartoon Network's content really is. There are a lot of different types of Cartoon Network lost media that I really enjoy talking about, mostly having to do with lost pilots and crossover commercials. But there's another kind of content I've just started researching and have begun falling down the rabbit hole for. I'm not really sure how I would label this, other than calling it powerhouse era content, but it's the stuff that existed from when the channel began to about the early 2000s. It feels like the majority of interest in Cartoon Network lost media starts with the city era and other than Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, you don't see a lot of older topics get discussed, but there's so much more to learn about them. For example, Toon Heads, an anthology series that discusses classic cartoons in a historical way, is a series I didn't even know existed for a long time. But once I started watching the series, I got hooked and was so excited to put together a video explaining all of its lost media. However, there's a bit of trivia about that video that directly relates to this topic. In the original script for that video, I had recollected a time when I was really little, having seen black and white cartoons being played on Adult Swim late at night. This memory has stuck with me ever since I was a kid, and I never figured out what it was I watched that night, believing it was a rerun of Toon Heads that featured black and white cartoons. That seemed like the most reasonable explanation until a suggested article showed up that informed me of a completely different show from the early days of Cartoon Network. This show is called Late Night Black and White, and features black and white cartoons from Fleischer Studios, Walter Lance, and MGM, all running back to back for an hour in the late night time slot. According to the CN Wiki article, it ran from 1993 to 2003, which was a similar run to Toon Heads, and even began airing on Boomerang in 2007 and Cartoon Network Japan shortly before that. But for as long as this series aired, and even with its international broadcast, the series is almost entirely lost, and there isn't even a lot of documentation about the series itself online. The most you can really find for discussion are old forums that talk about loving the show and it's frequently brought up alongside Toon Heads itself. As for recordings of the show, I was able to find one episode on YouTube complete with commercials and bumpers, and another episode on Internet Archive from Cartoon Network Japan, which seems to be just the cartoons. Other than that, there are a handful of bumpers and commercials that can be found, but there doesn't seem to be any episode list or directory for the series. This is one of the reasons why I found the topic so interesting, is the fact that despite the show having run for a decade, it barely exists on the internet. I even went to the Cartoon Network website to see if there were any listings for the show, but I couldn't find any mention of it, though I did spot Toon Heads on the schedule and even cool stuff I have never seen elsewhere, like Johnny Bravo model sheets. More on him later though. While Late Night Black and White doesn't give any historical context about the cartoons in it, and its production value was much lower than that of Toon Heads, I'd be surprised if these episodes were just thrown together 
without any documentation or care about selection. But I guess I don't exactly expect to find detailed episode guides either, which means these broadcasts are probably only going to resurface from VHS tapes. But even though these were compilations of old cartoons that I'm sure you can find elsewhere, it should be noted that the block might have actually contained some rare and lost content. I noticed in the original 1992 opening of the series, a clip is shown from Lady Play Your Mandolin, which was a cartoon featured in the Toonhead special about lost cartoons nearly a decade later. The special states this cartoon hadn't been seen in almost 70 years, but this promo suggests it might have actually been used in an episode of Late Night Black and White sometime in the 1990s, long before its Toonhead's premiere. It's possible there are more instances of other lost cartoons that were broadcast without anyone knowing they were rare or hadn't been seen in so long, either by the people that put them together or the viewers themselves. And it's for oddities like this which make the show one of the most obscure and forgotten from Cartoon Network. For this next segment, we're going to drift a little away from Cartoon Network itself and discuss an Adult Swim topic, which was actually the first one I had come across for this video, and that was a while ago, so I've been wanting to talk about it ever since. For as much obscure and weird content that Cartoon Network has made over the years, and has been dug up by the community, Adult Swim has its fair share of that too. Just a few videos ago, I discussed the lost pilot to 12 Ounce Mouse, which is something I don't think many people even knew existed, but I certainly wouldn't have guessed it to be lost forever, because the creators didn't properly archive their only copy. But this topic here is far more bizarre, for the fact that it feels like it shouldn't exist at all, and we're not even entirely sure what it is. On YouTube, there exists a video called Aqua Teen Hunger Force Simpsons Movie Promo, and it depicts characters from the Aqua Teen universe dressed up as Simpsons characters, moving around and interacting with their environment. You can even hear a voice clip of Homer screaming during his character introduction. There are a surprising amount of characters too. I didn't even think there were enough Aqua Teen characters to pair with the Simpsons ones, and the ad goes on for quite a while, as if this were promoting an actual episode. And it might actually be something like that. While the animation plays, an announcer introduces all the characters and advertises to watch Thursday Night at Midnight to see a Simpsons sneak peek Adult Swim style. When I first watched this ad, I was very confused by it, not sure whether or not to believe it was just a fan thing, or if it was a parody that Adult Swim made that never really existed beyond that. However, there are some answers about its origin that you can find online. This is believed to be a promo advertising a parody of the then upcoming Simpsons movie dated 2007. But that's basically all the information that's available online about it. There are comments in the video to look over, a Reddit thread, and a second thread from the Anime Superhero forums, but in every case, there are no recollections about its content or anything else from when it aired. Most mentions of users having seen it were from when they were kids, so there aren't any details provided about its content, or even how long the piece is which is really unfortunate because it leaves a lot of the important details a mystery as of now. When I first watched it and believed the ad to be a joke, I didn't figure they had animated anything beyond these scenes, but if it did air on TV, it must have been a full segment. In fact, the only other piece of info available is its air date, which was midnight on July 26th, 2007, according to Adult Swim schedule archives. However, this seems to be the only airing it ever had, so if you didn't catch it during its premiere, you wouldn't have seen it again. This is another unfortunate factor in how it was handled, because a single airing would mean it's going to be very hard to track down a secondhand recording of, though it does explain the short's overall obscurity. But for the amount of effort that was put into the project, I'm kinda surprised it was never put on the Adult Swim website or made available somewhere else. 
Sometimes when all that's available is an ad or promo, we can still get a good idea of what the full piece was like, without finding the whole thing. But in this case, I don't think the ad does the full special justice. I want to see how the characters interact, what the script is like, and even the motivation behind why this was made at all. It still feels like something that shouldn't exist, but it's cool that it does, and hopefully, if there is anything that can be done about a release, this can bring awareness to the community, or maybe Adult Swim itself can help us out. I mentioned earlier that we'd come back to Johnny Bravo at another point in the video. And well, here we are. I gotta say, I think Johnny Bravo specifically is one of my favorite shows from Cartoon Network to research Lost Media from, and we still have some unsolved mysteries I haven't really discussed in depth before, including the CGI JBVO test animation and another obscure European block that Johnny hosted called The Big Bravo Breakfast. But there's another one that's even bigger than all of these that I have discussed before, and it's definitely the most famous of all Johnny Bravo Lost Media, Meso Blues. This was the original prototype short that was made by Van Partible as his senior thesis project that was pitched to Cartoon Network before the series took shape. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that this is one of my most wanted pieces of Lost Media, and I want to give you guys an update about Meso Blues before we get any further. Recently, on the What's In My Head podcast, Van Partible was interviewed about a possible release of Meso Blues, which is something we've all been wondering for years at this point. But unfortunately, Van confirms he has no plans to release it. He states he would prefer to limit its release to conventions and animation classes, as to keep the short special, rather than end the mystery surrounding it. While I understand where he's coming from with this idea, I can't say I necessarily agree with it, and it's a little disappointing to hear. But if he feels that way about Meso Blues, then he might feel the same way about his other college animations that have yet to resurface and are in fact lost media. Not too long ago, I was browsing eBay looking for some Cartoon Network collectibles and came across a press kit that was released ahead of Johnny Bravo's premiere on Cartoon Network. The kit contains three color slides that showcase different Johnny Bravo promo art, and a document that details when the series will debut and what it's about. Below the information about the show is a write-up about the director, which in this case is Van Partible. I really do enjoy learning about Van's entry into the industry, so I gave it a good read, and discovered something very interesting in the write-up. Not only does it mention Meso Blues by name in the list of short films from college, but there are three others that go by the titles Who Are the People in Your Neighborhood, Attitude, and Solace. For as long as I've been researching Meso Blues, I've never come across any mentions of these shorts online, and they're not even mentioned on Van's website. It's a mystery what they're about or what they were used for, but it's so cool there's more unreleased work from Van out there, though I'm not really sure if he'd be interested in releasing them. Maybe if we see a Meso Blues release someday, we can get these three as well. But believe it or not, these are not the only pieces of Van Partible Lost Media, and the last one is more closely related to Cartoon Network. In an article published for Loyola Marymount University, Van describes his time working on Johnny Bravo at Cartoon Network, and recounts when he was fired during the Warner Brothers takeover of Turner Broadcasting. This is actually the reason for the show's visual changes between season 1 and 2, though Van would eventually make his way back to Cartoon Network. And when he returned, he came with a pitch for a new show that was ultimately rejected in favor of getting him back on the crew for Johnny Bravo. This show is not mentioned in the article by name, and it's not explicitly stated anywhere what the show was. However, there are scripts from unproduced pilots on his website that could be from this pitch. Tommy Safari specifically has that early 2000s Cartoon Network feel to it, so it might be this, and thankfully the script is available to view. There's another one written by Van as well, called Planet Dearth. 
However, neither have dates on them, so it's not clear when they were made. Patience, my pet. Patience. The show will be right back. I don't know about you guys, but Ed and Eddie is one of my favorite series to search for lost media from. It's right up there with Johnny Bravo. And just like Johnny, for some reason there's so much obscure or forgotten content that the Eds were used for. And you just don't see this kind of thing with Dexter or the Powerpuff Girls either. There have been a lot of Ed and Eddie searches, including a rumored pilot that was pitched to Comedy Central, which was proven to not exist, a crossover bumper where Eduardo from Foster's Home replaces Eddie in some clips from the show, which is still lost, and another mystery that appeared on the Lost Media Wiki forums not too long ago, discussing some rare Ed and Eddie media. Though this time, the post was accompanied by a screenshot, and the story behind this image is that it came from a commercial where the two apparently met, but no one had any content from it other than the screenshot that had been passed around. I'm no stranger to weird crossover commercials before, so this was one I wanted to do some serious looking into. However, about 30 minutes after the thread was made, another user posted a link to a YouTube video where the scene was sourced from. It was a promo advertising new premieres on Cartoon Network in November, and the whole commercial was essentially a mashup of their different shows. They all transitioned into one another, and the Kanker sisters seeing Mewtwo was just one of these. It wasn't anything specifically about them. Either way, there was no mystery about it anymore, since it wasn't lost. But I was not disappointed when I checked my Twitter DMs and discovered another Ed, Ed & Eddie crossover promotion that is still lost, and similar to most of the topics already discussed in this video, has gone completely undocumented. One of my viewers named Ryan brought to my attention a crossover that combines Ed and Ed Eddie characters and famous CD covers that appeared on Cartoon Network's website back in the day, making these official. The image attached in the message combines Johnny and Nirvana with the title of Edvana and has been printed out and used as a CD cover. According to Ryan, their origin is that of Cartoon Orbit, which was a big hub for trading virtual cards called C-Tunes with other users and building up a collection. I actually remember Cartoon Orbit very well and even used it quite a bit when it was active in the early 2000s. There were all kinds of different graphics to collect from each set, and while the majority of them have not been documented, the Cartoon Network Wiki article does have posters advertising many of the exclusive sets, including the album cover set. Here, we can see Billy and Mandy parodying the cover of Queen 2, and Foster's Home parodying the Beatles' Abbey Road. It definitely looks like a whole set of these were made and promoted on their website, but unfortunately, Ryan didn't save any of the others. While there's plenty of documentation about Cartoon Orbit itself, and some screenshots and video that show the interface, as well as some C-Tunes, the game is largely considered lost media, as the majority of its assets have not been recovered. There were also limited time promotions and exclusive C-Tunes to collect, so who knows how buried into the site the rest of these album covers were. If it wasn't for Ryan having printed out this image and remembering the promotion at all, there's a chance it never would have resurfaced. This is another example of the creativity Cartoon Network had with their characters back then, and I wonder if there were any other crossovers like this that are simply not remembered by anyone online. Honestly, Cartoon Orbit could have its own video because the topic is so big and it's something I haven't even thought about in years. If any of you guys played Cartoon Orbit, or have recollections of the rest of these CD crossovers, be sure to let us know, or even memories of other unique content that hasn't been archived online yet. By now you guys should be professionals when it comes to anthology series aired on Cartoon Network, because I've either talked about them in length, like Toon Heads or Late Night Black and White, or made mention of them in passing, like O Canada. 
allow me to add another one to your resume. This one might actually be the most bizarre of them all, not only for the content featured in it, but also for its short air cycle and name. This is Sunday Pants. Despite the obscurity of the series, and how it wasn't exactly a huge hit, there's still a good chance you've heard about it before, maybe from back in the day when it was airing. As someone who really doesn't remember watching a lot of the more obscure content from Cartoon Network back in the day, this is a show even I remember. Sunday Pants was another cartoon anthology series that first began airing in October 2005, often called the predecessor to What a Cartoon, which ended in 1997, though it differed greatly in content. Rather than being a curated pilot program for the channel, as What a Cartoon was, Sunday Pants was more of an animation showcase series, closer to the style of Liquid Television or Kablam, in that it featured many different forms of animation from many different creators. Some of the more memorable shorts from the show include Periwinkle Around the World and The Amazing Adrenalini Brothers, which I had memories of for years and could never source until rediscovering where it came from. However, none of these animations really took off in any way, and with the exception of Bernard and Monsteries, which aired on Boomerang, the rest remained connected to Sunday Pants, for the short amount of time it was even on the air to begin with. The show barely aired for a month on TV, before it was cancelled, though even now, it's not completely understood why the block did so poorly. While a lot of the animation seen in the block was a little more strange than what's typically shown on Cartoon Network, most point towards its time slot and content in the shorts as the biggest factors. Its premiere episodes were aired Sunday nights at 9.30pm, and some of the shorts used light cussing and references to alcohol, which was surprising for Cartoon Network. It's basically a bizarre late night animation showcase that didn't appeal to any specific audience. There are even some commercials made advertising the series, which you can find on YouTube, but it must not have helped in ratings, because the series was cancelled after only airing 5 episodes. This is where the lost content comes into play, because despite being cancelled so early into its run, a total of 11 episodes were made, which left the remaining 6 having been unaired and unavailable for viewing, following the archival of the previous 5. Several years later, the remaining ones were uploaded to Vimeo, where they were recovered, and now, only the episode Feed Me remains incomplete, as only 7 minutes of its total runtime were saved. However, that's not all the lost media from Sunday Pants that's yet to be found, because there are even harder to find episodes that are considered lost. The Lost Media Wiki article, and the Cartoon Network Wiki article for the series, make mention of two episodes that were cancelled during production, titled Funny Sweet and Just Add Sauce. I was really curious where this information came from, but couldn't find a credible source for it, so it might have just been insider knowledge that ended up getting passed around in the community over the years. Though, there is some reason to believe it's legit. It's been stated that Sunday Pants planned to return to Cartoon Network in January 2006, with a new batch of episodes. But that never happened, so these two could be remnants of that planned return. But then again, I also couldn't find a source that stated the series was going to return at all. And when you think about it, why would they do that after leaving six of its produced episodes unaired? It could mean the series was going to be rebooted in some way, if a January return was going to happen, so maybe the scrapped episodes were in a completely different style that more closely fits Cartoon Network's other programming. It definitely feels like a bit of a mystery within a mystery, which is even more mysterious when you consider this is all for a show that hardly aired and isn't remembered by anyone not obsessed with Cartoon Network. But I think it would be cool to get an answer on the unproduced episodes and find the rest of the missing content from the aired one. I think it would be an accurate statement to say puppet shows haven't exactly done great on Cartoon Network, which is why they hardly exist on the channel at all. In fact, 
One of the only puppet shows that was ever broadcast on the channel was Woolen Warriors, which is just a big meme at this point and why I purposely mention it in so many of my videos. Actually, on the topic of Woolen Warriors, while the entire series that was made to air on Cartoon Network was found, I haven't been able to find the original Taiwanese episodes that Woolen Warriors was adapted from. It's been stated by fans of the original series that the adaptation strayed too far from the source material, so it got me thinking where exactly it was the source material could be watched, and I came up empty-handed. The official Peely website has an archive of the different series by year, so I started looking through it trying to identify the characters present in Woolen Warriors, hoping I'd find the right one eventually. It premiered on Toonami in 2006, so the source material couldn't be any newer than that, and while some of the characters looked familiar, the only one I could identify was Scar, who seems to have appeared in several iterations of the series. Through some YouTube searches with what I found on the site, I came to a video from Season 22 of the series, which had a nearly identical environment to Woolen Warriors, but nothing else in the hour-long video looked to be the episodes on Toonami. It only aired twice before being cancelled, which is a very short run. But there was actually another puppet show that aired on Cartoon Network for what I can only assume was even less accumulated airtime. This was discovered around the time that Cat News became a popular topic, an animation that was only claimed to exist by a storyboard artist on Twitter who recalled it from his childhood. The short is still unidentified, and mystery remains unsolved. But it was believed to have been aired on Cartoon Network in the late 2000s, so people began looking at lesser-known content from around that era. This is when Heavimations discovered the existence of another completely undocumented Cartoon Network series, called Hot Dog TV. A series of one-minute interstitials that aired during the summer of 2010 and never again. It features puppets of hot dog characters from the Jim Henson Company, in a variety of different situations, and for quite a while, the only evidence of its existence were listings from Cartoon Network schedule archives that claimed the series aired in between shows. No content from it had resurfaced until a clip from one of the puppeteers was discovered in a reel that was posted to YouTube, and eventually, a VHS rip containing a different scene as well as a promo advertising it coming up next. While there's no episode list available, it's been stated that a total of 12 were made, and of those, we've only partially found two of them, Arg and Fiendish Footlong. Truth or Dare and Put Me In Coach, along with the other undocumented ones, have not resurfaced, though the reel from YouTube does contain clips from an unknown episode. I was so shocked to discover this existed at all, considering I was watching Cartoon Network a lot during the summer of 2010, and I never remember seeing this air or hearing about it online. I've probably said this before, but I still get the same feeling of intrigue for the fact that so much content from Cartoon Network can slip through the cracks, despite how popular the channel was and still is. It just goes to show you how deep their content really stretches, and the clear interest in getting it unearthed. Especially since so many of these topics in particular were content that brought a lot of discussion and memories to the table for so many people online and myself. I'm sure we'll come across many more mysteries like these ones, but if you have any memories from Cartoon Network or pieces of lost media from them that you'd like me to look into, comment down below, because I'm always looking to expand my knowledge of the channel, and until these pieces of lost media can be found, they'll definitely remain a mystery. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other Lost Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn. Well, it's like the pig says, that's all, folks.